hours. But the bulk of my work tonight is St. Genevieve and some of my European scenes. And before I go on and talk about these, I really think that, hi Marty and Sherry. <laughs> I really think that the two areas, when you talk about Germany and then you look at St. Genevieve, you can just see that European influence that comes from over there. Okay, so as far as what I'm looking at, um, this is my, all St. Genevieve. So this is looking down Merchant Street on a snowy night. And I've always wanted to paint this one and wanted to uh, get the warmth. Even though it's snow, which is typically cool, it was important that I show some of the warmth that you see up in the sky and from the glow. Um, this one, I actually, I normally take my work from uh, my own photographs, but Bob Mueller had done a photograph. Of course, he lives on this street. And so I asked him if I could use his photograph. And so this is my interpretation based on his photograph. Uh, this is the St. Genevieve Mill, which is uh, down from Seraphin Street and uh, along the railroad. And everything I paint has a, a special meaning to me. And, uh, well, I grew up here. But besides that, I used to live up on Seraphin. So all the more reason why this is very much uh, a subject matter that I really appreciate painting or enjoy painting. Also, and you'll see this in all my work, I really like working with strong lights and darks, with shadows and light. So almost everything you see, I try to make sure that I capture those two extremes, the shadows and the light. So um, uh, this one, oh, of this one, I just finished over the weekend. I worked with Zell Picnic. And our Art Guild Christmas walk theme this year is Memories. And so when I was walking home, I happened to pass these gentlemen standing at the tractors. And it brought back good memories of when I was a little girl, and mom and daddy would take us to a lot of the Christmas, uh, church picnics in the area. And daddy used to sell international tractors. And so we went to a lot of church picnics where he would take the tractors. This one is the Old Stone Ice House. And it's actually uh, across from the Southern Hotel, only this is the back side. And I really don't know a lot about the history, other than I just really liked the texture of the stone house. And of course, the light was very important to me. Now the ones I'm showing you now are the ones that I've just completed within the last couple months. So these are all pretty fresh. Uh, this one is actually taken from German days. And this was out in a uh, Martha's film. And he is uh, horseshoeing but it could very easily have been in St. Genevieve because I know at Heritage Days they do this type of, um, um, I think it's called forging. They work with the iron. And so, uh, but what I enjoy doing, again, it's working with the lights and darks, it's working with different textures, and I'm trying now to pull more figures into my work. Uh, not only trying to do, I call myself a regionalist, painting the places that I'm familiar with in here in the Midwest, but also the people. And I, and I have a lot of uh, interest in showing the past. So I see that in St. Genevieve today, and I'm trying to show it. This was from a plein air painting I, uh, that I did two years ago of the lime kiln. And driving in 32, this is the scene, all the time that I see. And so I remember I had to really look long and hard to find a spot where I could, could I, so that I could stand, and this is plein air, and I stood and I painted this outdoors. Uh, before we move on, this is a, actually one of my recent paintings, and I'm going to do a series of figurative studies. This is from a photograph I got from a friend of mine in Germany. Of They have a carnival there every year, which is like Mardi Gras, where they have lots of floats and music and so forth. And I just found this a very interesting subject because, well, I liked his face, kind of with an attitude, but I liked the scarf, I liked the clarinet. And uh, so I, and the name is Raphael, that happens, and his last name is Rich, which is interesting, R-E-I-C-H, as there are riches here in St. Genevieve. So who knows if there's a, you know, connection or not. But this, again, this is pastel, all of these are pastel. And um, again, it's showing texture, it's showing light, it's showing dark shadows. Um, now I've got a few others here, but this is the Sexar farm. Uh, out, oh, I can't remember what road it is, 
But that's a plain air. I did that one a couple of years ago. Uh, and then I've got a few oils down here, but that's St. Genevieve. And this one is a woodcut. Again, I did a couple of years ago after a workshop that we had with Jerry Walters. And the scene is up, uh, in Ersingen, Germany, old Ersingen, Germany. And this one, I like to travel to Germany. I'm fortunate to know some of my uh, descendants of my ancestors, so I'm able to visit these towns. This is in the Falls area. It's a town called uh, Lingenfeld. It's on the Rhine River. And this is some of the types of houses that are on this particular street. And let's see, moving on around. Uh, this is a scene from a farm in Germany. Now we're going into some of the German scenes. And a lot of these really, some of these could almost be St. Genevieve. Now this is a little bit older, obviously, but this is a kind of a, it looks like kind of an older farm that you, that you would definitely see in Germany. Uh, this one is uh, taken from a photo that I took when I was in Holland with the windmills. And um, besides the windmills, I, I really enjoyed doing the sky on that one because I remember it was a cloudy day. So some of these scenes from Europe are really kind of uh, fun to do because I love the texture, the light, the colors. They're all there. This is in Holland. We happened to hit the tulip fields when they were in bloom. We really lucked out. We hadn't planned it. We just got there, and I'm telling you what, that's how brilliant those tulip fields are. It's just an incredible, incredible view. And I uh, would love to do some more paintings of that. This one is a, a cottage in Germany. It's called Rotenburg on the Tauber. And uh, this is a walled city in Germany. And uh, uh, the flowers are like that. I mean, they are. You know, they're just beautiful flowers every place. And uh, those old ladies, I think, just added to it. Mm -hmm. uh, this one is from my ancestral town of uh, Ersingen, Germany. And this is one of the two fountains in the town that has been there, oh my gosh, I know before the 1600s. Um, this, and of course, I like this because this is the old school where my ancestors went to school. But more than anything, just look at the colors. I mean, I hardly even had to make anything up. I mean, it's just those nice pinkish tones and oranges just really pretty uh, this was done another German scene um, another thing I like about the Ger uh, doing German scenes if you look at the uh, the tiles the roof tiles the clay tiles and it's really interesting a lot of times whenever they replace the tiles they don't always put the same color so that's how a lot of times you'll see on some of these pictures there'll be different colors okay um, this one is a scene in Bavaria. He was threshing wheat, and I thought that was really interesting. And um, just um, again, I love the Black Forest. I mean, it's the Black Forest is just so dense and so dark, but it's not black. You know, it's just if you get in there, you just see all these other hues. But I like the contrast again. That was important to show. Uh, this one was in Holland. And that particular day, it had been raining. We uh, were able to see the tulips. And then the sun came out, and all these families came up, and they're riding along the dikes on their bicycles. And I went, wow, that's a neat view, you know? That, like I said, a lot of these just bring back lots of memories to me, hopefully on some of the others. This was done in Bruges, Belgium. Uh, outside of all of these beautiful, almost Tuscan colors, you see. Uh, the, the oranges and beiges and so forth. This is what caught my attention, though, the bicycle. Um, I really, it's just very typical, but I really like the scenes that have the bicycle. And this town, it's kind of a canal city, and people, obviously, they, they use bicycles a lot. I mean, you just got to watch out for that. Okay, uh, this is another scene in Germany, Belfingen, and here you can see, again, I may have, uh, the colors may be a little more saturated, and, but still, uh, that's my interpretation, you know, pulling in the complementary colors. They're there, it's just I probably punched it a little bit, and still try to pull in those really dark, dark values. Uh, 
Let's see, the last one, that's another German scene. This was in uh, Lingenfeld. And it's what's all you need about this. That's pretty typical of what some people do during the day. They don't have screens. They just kind of sit at the window and watch the world go by. And I've been over there a couple of times, and that man has been at that window both times. So I just had to do that picture. Uh, here's St. Genevieve again. This is uh, the cottage in the Gabor Garden. And um, this one, again, my interpretation is, well, I don't know, the color was there. Uh, this I took this photo some time ago. But the color was there, and I just, uh, really, the colors, I think, are really pretty, not to mention the composition. Uh, this one, I know my brother named, he said it, it's memories of yesteryear. And it really is because when we were growing up as kids, I can remember the Hoffman place, which is now that beautiful yellow, you know, building that they renovated. But growing up, there were all the, you know, the old cars in and around the Hoffman place which was an eyesore at one time. And then when they moved it, it the cars, it's, it was like, where are the guards, you know? We need those cars. But this is the Moses Austin house. And uh, I really am getting more into doing like street scenes or trying to do multiple types of uh, scenes like that. This one was taken at Heritage Days. Um, again, I really, uh, coming from a farming background, and uh, really enjoyed going to Heritage Days. And this was just a, a grouping of uh, some of the equipment that was there that day. We've got the sorghum and the trailer and so forth. And um, again, these are just kind of the scenes of kind of days gone by and so forth. And I hope this year at Heritage Days, I could maybe perhaps do some more scenes like that. This one, my brother named again by accident. He goes, he saw this, he goes, oh, that's Peacock Bob, he said. Well, as the story goes, I took this photo, oh, many years ago, but this Bob is a fiddle player, or a bass player from the Peacocks, which play here during French days. And so that's how I came up with the name Peacock Bob. And that was one of my first figurative studies. I kind of, I used to do a lot of figurative work and then got away from it and got into scenery more. Otherwise, let's see, Ed. Um, there's one in here, I don't know if you want to look. This one, uh, again, it's a German scene. Uh, just some of the oldest of the architecture. There are like three different levels, and this is one of the lower levels. And um, I just thought it was just rather interesting with all the, not just the colors and the shutters, but the vines and so forth going around it too.
we've got we've got um, the neighbor, the neighbor, the neighbor, the neighbor, the neighbor, the
Street Inn in Studio 221. This is our fourth Friday art walk in September, and we have several featured artists that we're going to show you this evening. I introduce myself as the owner of the Main Street Inn, and my man the manager is Shannon, my daughter, who's also an artist. So this evening we're going to give you a kind of panoramic view of the things that we have in our gallery. We'll start first with the um, things that we have from Bob Kruger. He's a friend of mine that's a photographer. He's a graduate of photography and um, media from uh, UPSL. And um, he brought us a variety of things. And as he expressed um, when he brought them over, is these are things that stopped him, that made him look at life a little bit differently. And you'll notice that most of his um, photographs have a lot of texture and depth and repetitious patterns in them. We'll pan up here now to a brand new addition to our, to our gallery, which has actually been traveling through Bollinger County. This one is done by an artist who does a lot of exhibitions and mostly donates his work to non-for-profit organizations. Um, his name is Oreki, his first name is Timothy. His, um, all of his work has texture in it, and you may not be able to tell, but much of it is corrugated cardboard that has been textured, it has pearls, it has string, it has buttons, but it's very three-dimensional. And I said this one was donated to my friend um, for the Bullinger County uh, Recycling Center. So when we sell that, um, those proceeds then will go to help out the recycling center. This is another one of Bob Kruger's um, photographs, and you'll see that there's an angel in there in a beautiful fall setting. That one has already been sold, so um, he was pretty excited that he, now he could call himself a professional photographer. Over here, these two paintings up here, done by my friend Jane Selig, um, who is also an art therapist. This is her particular work, but she works a lot with children and families, particularly troubled children, um, and helps them then through their artwork and play therapy to be able to express the things that might be going on inside in a more appropriate manner than sometimes we see those uh, inside anxiety or anger be uh, expressed. So uh, this is just the, the first of some other ones that we'll have with her. Now these sketches and charcoals and things like this are a representation of my daughter Shannon McBride's work. Um, we've only been here at the inn now a few months and expect to see her work on the wall for sale. These are representations of her early portfolio. So um, many of her teachers said she had great promise. So I'm hoping that in this time and space she'll have the ability and the time to be able to do the art that is one of her greatest passions. particular um, kind of ethereal paintings come from my friend Jerry Zobel. Uh, she's also made some cards that match it. Um, she's a very interesting artist. Um, hers are kind of almost um, magical when she paints them. She sits very quietly with the canvas in front of her and her paints and then all of a sudden it's like it just expresses itself on the canvas. And Oftentimes when I've watched her paint, she's been just as surprised as the rest of us were for what showed up on the canvas. Um, 
So uh, they have a very um, ethereal is probably the best way that I can describe the um, the subtleness and the and the beauty and uh, very intimate. more Bob Kruger's work. And actually the center one is one of the shops here on Main Street. I'm not sure which one still has a blue floor and a red door, but he took that one actually here on Main Street. So the next thing we need to do is find out which one it was. He couldn't remember which one he had done that one. And then our final artist for this week is Lindsay Design. Um, she's also a friend and um, her specialty is jewelry. All of it is handcrafted, many of it, many of it gemstones, a lot of sterling silver and copper. Um, so she's offered us a variety to show here. And she also does all kinds of custom work and will make something to order for you uh, if you have some special requests. Uh, she's been singing with the French French group here in St. Genevieve. She works at Charlottesville also, where I do some work. And um, just thought she had the perfect, perfect face and braid for that painting. And, and one actually it won first place in the Presbyterian Manor uh, Farmington competition, first place. And then it went on and was selected for the Presbyterian Manor competition in 18 different facilities in Missouri and Kansas. And this is a girl who came to the winery and she always wore a straw hat. And someone said to me, that girl has a perfect bone structure, you need to paint her. And uh, I said, oh, okay. So she came back maybe months later and said, well, did you paint her yet? And I said, no, but would you buy it if I did? And she said, well, I might. So anyway, not for that reason, but she did, she was a lovely girl and had a great personality. So um, I photographed her and painted her. And that one actually won best of show in that same uh, Presbyterian Manor competition in Farmington. But it didn't make the calendar. The other one made the calendar for some, some reason. And this is my daughter, Anne. Uh, she passed away this past July the 4th. Uh, she was in treatment for a year prior to that. And that was, uh, the photograph was taken at an Easter gathering. And uh, she always had a smile, but this was one of her more serious days. And, uh, Anyway, I liked, I thought it showed uh, the love and courage that she, that's how she got through that whole year and gave so much to all of us. And this is a girl named Jana. She was a model at Little Art College. And uh, we, all, we all painted her. And it's amazing to see how different all the paintings were, how we all saw her a little bit differently in her styles. Really, it was really fun to all paint together and paint the same person. And this is my granddaughter, Rachel. You can see that that one's not for sale. But uh, that was one of the first paintings I did in this particular style. Uh, I started it in James Woolrich's uh, workshop. And he liked the style and and urged me to continue painting that work. So that's why almost this whole series was done in that same, uh, same method. He said no one else is painting like that, so keep it up. And this was a, uh, actually a plain air painter who was painting at Charlottesville one day and I photographed her and uh, painted that painting. And everybody thinks it's me because I guess we're kind of the same size. 
And this was a summer solstice painting that we painted from um, over at Fort Kaskaski, Illinois, looking over into St. Genevieve. And this is from a Martin Harvest, again in Charlottesville, and that's because I worked there. And uh, that was also a plein air painting, and it did get honorable mention that year. These three uh, palette knife paintings, that was the first project that we had in the painting class that I took that first semester, and it, they were all done at palette knife. And that's a girl, and her name was Hannah. She was also a model at Mac. And the paintings of the grapes, uh, I think it's called Time to Harvest. That was just from uh, from a harvest scene when the grapes were at their peak, ready to ready to harvest. And this is the Animal Restaurant in St. Genevieve, a very popular place. And, Good place to get onion rings. I always have to have a fix every now and then. <laughs> this is my granddaughter, Rachel, when she was about five, and that's our cat. Her name was Oprah because of her color. This is another cat, not actually the same way. One, this one's not the same one. This one's name was Blondie. And uh, the name of that one is the lazy cat and the courageous mouse. I think we've all had that experience with that we've had cats that didn't really care whether the mouse was around or not. Except maybe to play with if they happen to have enough uh, energy to do so. Done in Los Cabos, Mexico. Um, I was there for a few days and these were just a couple of girls running on the beach and I photographed them and put that painting. This is my granddaughter, Allison, and that's her dog. This is a series of bird paintings that I did. I think that's good. We got three now. Thank you for watching Channel 798. Thank you for watching Channel 7 and 98. Hi, thank you very much for watching Channel 798.